Okie dokie. So today. Uh, so today what I'm doing is, as the description in the video says, I really, between clearing out print cues and print and getting, you know, a, a lull between print jobs and things, I want to make sure that I keep my printers uh, healthy and being able to keep successfully printing without issues, without leaks, without things like that, that I, you know, see a lot of people tend to encounter. I, uh, and like I say in the description, this, there's, there's a million ways to do this. Um, and I'm only speaking to the way that I do it and the way that works for me. I print a lot of stuff. I sell a lot of 3D printed props for toy photography and dioramas. So I, I have a, you know, not an all-inclusive <laughs> amount of information, an exhaustive amount, but I, but I do have a, a decent amount of knowledge in, in, in how this works and, and what works for me. So the first thing I want to do is I use uh, isopropyl. You can, you can really buy this on Amazon, but honestly, I'm so lazy and I forget to buy it on Amazon that I just go to Walmart and buy, uh, I usually buy 12 of these, uh, and that fills up my, it fills up my, um, wash station also. 10 of them will fill up my wash station and I buy two extra because I like to keep the bottle, I like to keep a spray bottle full of isopropyl also. I don't buy the 99, I mean, you can. 91 works absolutely just fine, perfectly well for what I do. And the cost difference between 91 and 99, when you're buying two gallons, you know, I mean, it can be substantial depending on your budget. And, and I, don't, I don't notice a difference between 91 and 99. I'm not putting on people's cuts. I'm just washing resin prints with it. And, and it does absolutely fine for me. Hey, go figure what's up. So, you know, so that being said, you just, you know, uh, there's some people who would say, oh, only buy 99. Well, buy 99. <laughs> you know, but uh, we're going to slide this little sprayer back down in here. And I always keep, like I say, isopropyl in a bottle. Uh, a couple other things. When you get resin bottles and you use them to fill your printers, uh, and you have an extra resin bottle left over that's empty, I always keep one. Uh, and the reason I always keep one is because you never know when you're going to need to do something in between the times you service these. Uh, you might need to um, pour resin back into a bottle and your last bottle is only half full and you've got to empty a whole vat of resin into a bottle and you don't have any room. So always keep an extra resin bottle that's uh, been, you know, emptied uh, on hand. And that way, that way you've got, um, you've got room to always pour resin somewhere <laughs> beside in the trash, uh, which you shouldn't be throwing in the trash anyway. Strike that comment from the record, Your Honor. <laughs> you know, so uh, here starting out, I've just got a couple basic things. Uh, I'm only going to do two printers uh, today. Um, I've got some stuff I got to get out for Etsy. So that just came in that I want to get going and it's going to take a while to print this stuff. So I'm going to do these two printers. Um, and what I, first thing that I do is I'll grab the two build plates for each printer. Uh, and if you ever look on your build plate, you can usually see there's a little residue, a little residual stuff on here, a little white filmy stuff. Um, and this is one thing that I do. I'll take a, they make these in red and green and uh, these are just little scotch pads, not steel wool, not anything abrasive uh, that will take your <laughs> metal away. Just a little scotch pad, man. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the fantastic, the fantastic effect of just doing this right here. So, we've got our spray bottle of isopropyl. We're going to go ahead and just spray a little bit on here. Now watch this. 
I'm just going to go in a back and forth motion, not swirling it all around, just back and forth. Okay. Give it a few, a few passes with this. And here's, here's the magic. We're going to take a paper towel, and I use a lot of paper towels. Watch this. Okay. Clean this bad boy up. Now watch this. When I totally wipe this down, you're going to see how different this looks. And this just goes through and gets any little bits of print that are on here that you didn't get off with your scraper. Uh, look at that. Totally, totally different looking. It is good to go. So that's one. We'll do the same thing with the other one. Uh, this is a build plate that uh, came with the newer printers. They ha It has that checkered engraved deal on there for better adhesion. Um, so, but same process, back and forth. Okay, back and forth just like this. Same thing. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Wipe this stuff down. Get a new paper towel. Okay. Wipe that down. And that really just sort of cleans that build plate off really nicely. You can go through if you want and spray it again and make sure that any of that stuff is off of there. Okay. We're good to go. Wipe that down. Okay. Good to go on that one too. So, put those to the side. What's going down? Go figure what you're up to, man. I'm going to put these to the side over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and... I know personally from the, the types of stuff that I print, there's going to be a little bit of uncured or, or cured print on the bottom of my FEPA and the reason is is because I print a lot of wood grain stuff and one of the important things for me that I need to make sure that I, I, I check my FEPs often is because it creates a lot of islands. Islands when you're going through in your slicer and you're going through each layer uh, you'll see these bits of the print that uh, are kind of floating in air they need to be supported well when you're doing like a wood grained or a heavily textured model and you're slicing it you get a lot of islands so what happens is the beginning part of when I slice these things you go through and you're and you're adding different size supports to each of these islands to prevent there being any failed print and you know uh, things that don't get supported well in doing that you can't get every single island uh, on a wood grain uh, print. Uh, at least I can't. And so there's always going to be some little tiny little piece here or there that happens to, uh, you know, remain on the FEP. And that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, that's exactly what this is for that we're going to do right here. So we're going to take one of these off and uh, move it to the side. And another thing that I want to have on hand real quick is my handy dandy ShamWow. No, I don't need a ShamWow. Uh, <laughs> where is my, where is my spatula? Uh, let me get my, oh, here it is. My rubber, rubber spatula. Uh, you don't need a ShamWow. So I don't know what's in frame here. Let's see if I move this out of the way and, uh, okay, you guys can see enough, I think. Uh, what? Oh, I didn't get a new printer. Go figure. I'm just servicing some of my old printers. They're not old, but I mean, just, just going through and, uh, since I've got, uh, I thought I had a lull in my print time. I thought I was done printing for the weekend. Uh, order came in and I was going to clean these and service these yesterday, but I got lazy <laughs> and then a new order came in, uh, for a cemetery set and I'm like, oh. Well, I guess I better clean and print or clean and update my printers before I print that. 
Uh, and so anyway, that's what we're doing. So here I've got a metal funnel with a little strainer inside there. Plop it right down in there. And it's important to kind of keep this dry and you don't want stuff on here. Uh, I use a cardboard every time. Um, just cut a piece of cardboard box and I'll put on here. And then I'll unscrew that. First thing I'll do is I'll take my FEP off, my VAT off, and I'll just go ahead and look at my screen. Screen looks good. There's, and, and to be quite honest, the original screen protector that came on my printers, and I've had this printer two years, is still on there. Never changed, never changed it once. Okay, so let's go ahead and tear off a piece of paper towel. And there will be sometimes little resin around the outside of this, uh, just because I'm kind of messy. There's none on the screen. It just gets around the outside, and that and that's perfectly fine. It's not a big deal, man. Uh, we don't want alcohol in that. So we'll just spray a little bit on here. We'll come around here. We'll wipe that off. Don't drag it across the screen. Don't put resin where there ain't resin, okay? Wipe that down. Throw that in the trash. And then now that that's clean, we'll go ahead and wipe the screen itself down with a little alcohol on there. Clean that bad boy up. And what we're looking for on the screen is that there's no resin, which would tell you that you've got a bad FEP. So we'll just give this a nice wipe back and forth. Don't drag your paper towel through the grease rails and get grease everywhere, because then that's going to be a new mess to clean. Okay. Looks good. There's nothing on there. We're golden. <laughs> All right. You know what? It does, because I put your sticker on my, my supply closet. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. I need a, you can send me another sticker. I'll get one from you when I come to Legion's Con, man. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and inspect the tape around the LCD screen. It's all good. Everything looks good on there. I'm not worried about any of that. What I want to do now is, in advance, go ahead and pull off a piece of paper towel. And this is the part that... I wear gloves. I, I get a super bad rash if I touch this stuff. I mean... It's like a poison oak rash. It's nuts, man. Uh, so we'll go ahead and there is a way to pour this. You keep the arrow or the little slot that way. Go ahead and pour it straight. Don't pour it at a real low angle because then it drips down the side and it could get underneath the FEP and the VAT. So we'll go ahead and pour that. Where did I do it with my little... Rubber spatula I was making a fuss about. And I lost my spatula. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Now I'm going to show you this because I can see it already. And it's not a big deal. But we'll go ahead and make sure this is clean. Go ahead and get this resin out of here. Okay. There we go, get this little bit out. Set that on the paper towel. <laughs> okay, let that continue to drip. Okay, we'll get this, we'll wipe this down. This edge right here, so that no resin goes back underneath and we have another type of mess to contend with. Okay. All right. So, we'll set this here to the side. And you can set this down because this one has rubber pegs on it so it's not sitting right on something and it could puncture the FEP. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and wipe this off. I don't want a bunch of stuff with resin that I'm tracking resin everywhere. We'll set that to the side, throw that away, throw that away, get a fresh towel, a fresh piece of towel. That's why I like the roll paper because I can just tear these pieces off as I need them all right get that out of the way now <clears throat> we'll move this out of the way and I'll share something with you here and uh let me get this out of the way too whatever you don't need just keep it out of the way because it will get in the way <laughs> so let's take a look at this okay any resin that's on your hands try to like I say, you don't want to be tracking this stuff because you don't think there's any there, but you'll leave little resin fingerprints everywhere. It's like wet paint. 
It's like fifth wheel grease. Any truck drivers out there? Fifth wheel grease? Yeah. <laughs> it gets all over the place. Okay, so now we're good. There's no resin on my gloves. We're, we're good. All right. Um, so now what we want to check as a general... I'm going to get my alcohol bottle and I'm going to spray this directly into my vat. You can hear it. it. sounds like a snare drum. Okay. And I'm just getting the residual alcohol out. And I'll show you. It's I'm out of frame here, but I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, we're going to get this residual bit of, not alcohol out, residual bit of resin out of the, out of here. Okay. So, now you come back over. Let me get the rest of the alcohol out. Get these little drips out. All right. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as inspecting the FEP and, and kind of already anticipating what's on it because I know what I print and I know how I print and so I can kind of gauge what my FEP's going to look like. Um, so we'll set this down here. All right. Now we'll take a look at, this is the FEP and the way it looks. There's no holes, there's no punctures, there's no nothing. There's one little dinky tiny little piece of resin on there. And that's totally fine. I'll take that off. Not a big deal. We'll just let the rest of this alcohol get it out of there. I just don't want to have a bunch of liquid. Okay. So, now, this little dinky tiny piece here... I don't know if the if the phone will pick that or the the GoPro will pick that up, but you can just take your hand, uh, your thumb and kind of rock it under here. Let's get this. Just kind of rock it under there and loosen that up, and let's see what. Uh, there it is. It's already already out of there. Well, it is out of there if I get it on there. There we go. <laughs> it's it's gone. Let's dry that out. <laughs> and uh. And that's all it takes. Now, if you've got more or less resin cured in there, you know, then you're gonna, you're going to uh, need to repeat that process and you know, until you get it off. But, but uh, some people say, oh, don't put paper towels in your in your vat or on your fib. Like I say, there's a million ways to do this, and I print a lot of stuff constantly. I have never, ever had a problem. Now, what you don't want to do is your whole goal is to keep this FEP as clear, as see-through as possible so that the light can pass through it and not be, not be disturbed. The UV light needs to be able to pass through this FEP. And it needs to be like if you're looking through a pair of glasses, you don't want it all scratched up because you don't see as well, right? So same same thing here. If you're looking through a foggy window, the light doesn't pass. You can't see what's outside as well. Same principle here. Uh, so so we want to look for a couple things on this FEP. We want to look for, first of all, <clears throat> any signs if you roll it in the light, any signs of punctures or nicks or anything like that. We want to look for general indentations or parts that are uh, kind of deformed a little bit. I don't have any of that. You can see where I do most of my printing. Most of my printing happens between here and here. I don't print to the edges a lot. Uh, not that it's bad, but the closer you get to the edge uh, of the screen or the FEP, sometimes the less detail um, you you get on the print but for me it's really not an issue i'm not printing faces and stuff like that so my my fep is really good this is totally able to be used again uh for another big old round of printing i can also go ahead and start using some of the outside of my fep also uh and and printing things that uh will fit around the outside to start getting some use out of that too uh, but we're looking really good here. Like I say, there's no, there's nothing to be concerned about here. Um, everything looks nice. I use a rubber squeegee, 
Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, go figure. Don't use one on yours then. <laughs> But everything's looking real good. I think we're golden with this. So we're going to set this off to the side. And, uh, and before we do that, actually what we want to do is, since we just had lots of alcohol and we drained the resin out of here, this is really important to go through here, through this metal tension ring, and just dry it out. Make sure there's nothing inside there. And let's go ahead and check the tension on this real quick. Okay, we're good. There's nothing in there. I'm going to get a Allen head out of here and I'm going to just double check all the screws around the, uh, where's my small one? Here it is. Uh, all those little Allen heads around here just to make sure none have loosened up. Nobody wants a saggy fap. <laughs> And that's all this is. These are all good. And if any one is loose, you got to kind of wonder why. But I've never had that problem. Uh, so we'll just go back through and just make sure they're snug. Do not over tighten these. You will pay the price. Everything is good. It's all snug. There's no leaks. There's no nicks. There's no nothing wrong with this. We're going to set this off to the side and get it out of the way. Okay, we're good on that one. Um, I I would go through and I don't know if you can see this uh, machine or not. Um, you can double check your your bolts here on the first on the first Photon Mono X printers, uh, and you can see it on this on on this one here. Let me share with you real quick. I want to show you something. What would happen is when you put the yellow cover on and you print, the gases from the resin prints would weaken the plastic that they used on the uh, build plate adjustment knob and the vat knobs. It would weaken the res. It would weaken the plastic, and the plastic would start to crumble. So, on the subsequent printers, you know, um, any cubic fixed that. But I mean, this is old news. But uh, if you have an old printer still, which I do, um, you go through and you check the, the plastic and make sure everything's good and not crumbling. We got a little resin in there. We're just going to clean that out. Uh, and so double check all the plastic parts. Uh, make sure there's no, you never want to get resin down in here and then have it cure that, you, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not knocking folks. I, I get on the, these forums sometime and I see people. And I don't know how they create such a mess with a resin printer. Not to say that we don't all make mistakes and there's learning, but some of the stuff that I see is absolutely, I don't know how they come up with it. Uh, and, you know, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, just pay attention. Keep this stuff all clean and clear. It's all you got to do. Use your power of logic and reasoning and observation and make sure things are clear and clean, leak free. What well, you're going to get into trouble is if you have leaks. <laughs> once, once that bad boy starts leaking, then you you've got some some fixing to do. Uh, yes, always take care of your. There you go. That's a new hashtag for you. Go figure. Take care of your knobs. Keep the knobs all cleaned and wiped down. There we go. Watch this. Let's run this through the through the paper towel and see what the threads look like. That threads are good. Nothing in there. Golden. No plastic coming off of here. That one's good. Uh, let's do the same on this one. Let's clean this, clean this off. Because I'm kind of messy. I do tend to get resin places that it's not supposed to go. And I'll track it around. <laughs> but that's me. That's why I take the time to clean and do maintenance. I'm not, uh, I could grease the rails on this today. Um, I may do that. Um, let me see here what I want to do. Um, so we've got these cleaned up. This is broken and I've known about it for a while, but it's not crumbling. So I'm not really concerned with that. So we'll move this stuff to the side. 
over here somewhere. And uh, you can't really see my, let me, let me turn this printer on. Okay. And what I'll do is I'm just going to give a little wipe down on these rails of some of this excessive grease that I have on there. Sometimes I get a little passionate about the, uh, the amount of grease I put on this machine. But honestly, I mean, as long as it's not dripping down nowhere and it's not getting on your sensors or on your screen, you're okay. Uh, because when you think about these, these printers, some of my, my prints are 2,000 or 3,000 layers. Well, that machine has to, it's 3,000 layers, so that's 6,000 times that it has to go up and down. It requires, you know, a good amount of uh, lubrication in there to make sure that you get a smooth travel and nothing gets bound up and nothing, and it does, doesn't take much uh, grease to do it but you definitely want to make sure you've got it on there and if you've never done it then you know and you've printed a lot then you need to start thinking about getting it done uh, and I wasn't even aware in the beginning that you could grease these things I was just you know you don't know what you don't know and um, and uh, yeah there's your other hashtag go figure <laughs> So what I'm doing, and, and I'm a bit out of frame, so you really can't see, but let me adjust this uh, camera up just a little bit. You can probably see a little bit better. There we go. Because I don't want to drag the printer over here. So what I'm doing is, I've got a jar of Q-tips here also that I that I use for occasions such as this. Um, I do have, uh, we're going to go in through here and just take a little bit of this extra grease out because I'm going to put a little bit more in. I might as well, since I'm doing this video, I might as well go ahead and do this. Uh, it's not going to gonna hurt nothing. We're just going to clean the rails out. Okay. And we'll get this bad boy fired up like it's brand new, man. She'll be running on all cylinders. There we And too much grease can be just as bad also uh, because these tolerances are real tight in here. So too much grease could actually prevent it from moving as fluid as it needs to. Uh, these tolerances are pretty, pretty tight on this rail. And so you, you don't want an excessive amount, uh, but you do want some. Kind of like when you're cleaning a gun, you know, you don't want... You don't want to just spray that bad boy down with all kinds of grease, man. I mean, you, you just need enough. And you kind of kind of figure out what enough is. Uh, and get it on there. So we're good in here. Uh, so the next thing I want to clean up here a little bit is this rail. Because I'm going to put new grease in. Hey, why travel? Look who it is. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? <laughs> So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and clean up a little bit is I'm going to move my Z-axis up and down and I'm going to just wipe this extra grease off the worm gear here, the worm drive, the whatever you want to call it. Um, going to take a little bit of this paper towel here and sort of soften it up a little bit because these paper towels are a little bit rough. A little bit rough, and we're gonna start at the top. Tools move Z. We're going to go up by ten millimeters, and there we go. Get your butt on up to the top. Okay. Get all the way up yonder. One more time. That'll be good. Did you see that pic on Instagram? Which one? Why travel? I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I did. I was gone yesterday after a little while, and I I didn't really get in my studio a whole lot yesterday. So we're just gonna lightly put the paper towel here, and we're gonna go down. 
and just, you don't want to put pressure on this worm drive. You don't want to bend it. Just want to get some of that extra old grease off of there. And then we'll stop it. And we'll go back to a clean piece of this paper towel. Or we'll just get another one. And, uh... Yeah, I'm not sure which picture you're referring to. But yeah, just, uh... Let me know and I'll take a look at it. So now we're going to do, we're going to kind of soften this little rascal up a little bit. Okay. And we're going to do it on the top up here. And then we're going to continue to go down a little bit here. And like I say, you don't want to bend this. You're not looking to put pressure on this. You're just looking to get the grease off of here. Push stop. There we go. Just looking to clean some of that extra grease out of the, out of the worm draft. Because we're going to put some new grease in there. Um, same thing here. Now we'll go back up. There we go. Okay. Get some of that old stuff. I sent over my beginning. Oh, okay. I'll have to take a look and see. Did you send it in a message to me? I'll have to look and see on the messages. I don't think I've checked my messages yet this morning. I spent most of my morning building my new Instagram page that has to do with just scuba diving and all the failures and successes that come along with being a new scuba diver. <laughs> so if anybody wants to see that, check that out. It's insightful underscore imagery underscore scuba. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, that's, that's, that's what I did most of the morning. So I'll definitely check uh, why travel. So let's go ahead and get some of this cleaned up. I'll definitely check that out for sure. Okay. I think we're good there. We've got some of that old grease out of there. I want to clean that rail just a little bit, a little bit more. And, and we're almost done with this. This, this doesn't take uh, very long at all, man. We're almost done with this. Okay. But it's really important, man. I, I, I got to say that, you know, the only time I'll get a failed print is after I first model and design something and I go to slice it. The very first time I print it, I may get a part of it that fails or something. I don't get full on print failures and I rarely get partial print failures if I do. It's usually only chalked up to being that it's the first time that I printed a particular model that I needed to add a support somewhere that I didn't pay attention to. Um, that's usually what it what it comes from, but it rarely ever comes from machine problems because I, I keep the machine maintained, the bed leveled, the FEP good. Uh, you know, I keep everything as maintained as, as I can so that I know that uh, in that little triangle of deduction that, well, it's not the printer, so that only leaves the operator <laughs> uh, or there's a problem with the model uh, itself, you know. And so um, that being said, like I say, and I, and I don't say that to sound like I'm some wizard or something, but you really shouldn't get print fail failures. I use the same resins all the time. Uh, you know, there, there's really no, no need for, for, for print failure. Um, and if you do get one, just check with the most obvious is my bed level. Um, you know, is my, and if it is, then when you take that, when you take that build plate off, don't just scrape that in the trash. Look and see how it failed. Look and see at the supports. Were the supports coming off? Did it did it fail fail midway into the print at the beginning of the print at the end? All those things tell you something about why it failed, and so be looking at those things um, to understand why it failed and how you can prevent it from the next time. And then if it's something that you print all the time, then you should never really get a failure again on it. Uh, once you you know, that's what I do anyway. Okay, so we're good on all this. Uh, 
what I'm going to do here real quick, and I, and I might as well because I, I have everybody on this live. Um, uh, I will. I think it was a message, but my first time Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll check it out for sure. Um, so the grease that I use for the gear, for the worm drive, for the Z-axis is a white lithium grease. Doesn't take much. Uh, doesn't take much at all. We're going to use some of that. And then there's another one that I use. Let me get it out of my cabinet here. This one here is a little messier. Uh, this one here is a little bit messier, but I keep it in a bag. And it's marine grease with a little, you have to buy a mini tip. Because believe it or not, and I, I can't speak for other printers, but I know the Inicubic Photon Mono X does. Uh, and this is a Mono X also. But the Mono X2 doesn't have doesn't have this grease fitting. So so there's no way I can do that on that printer unless I just grease the rail itself. It pro it, it just comes with a pre-greased uh you know um carriage or whatever you call you know the the piece that goes up and down on the on the z-axis on the rails but the photon mono x does uh, and the you know have this and so anyway uh what i do is the grease gun it's already got grease in it and if you keep your grease gun all greasy and grease all on the outside of it shame on you nobody likes a messy grease gun So, this is what we do. We'll just take a little bit of this. I'm going to start with this uh, at the top because I'm going to grease underneath the fittings here real quick. So, let's go all the way up. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. Just about there. I don't want to be bumping this button until it goes up there and it goes, ah, 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 and it's at the top and it's trying to keep going. Okay, we're good right there. You don't want to be wearing the machine out. So we're good all the way down. Now, if you can look, look underneath, there's two little fittings right here. These are both uh, grease fittings. So what we'll do is we'll bring this little rascal over here just a little bit and I want you to be able to see this so you don't really have to lay it down so what we'll do is we'll just go like this you don't have to lay it down to do that I just wanted to show you where the fittings were so we'll go ahead and put this into the into the little fitting there's a little bit of a of an indentation there that you can feel or I can feel you can't because you're just watching this video <laughs> Uh, and you'll know you're in the right spot because there's like I say a little tiny indentation in there and that's a little one It's a tiny one Let's put it to the side and you don't want to drop the grease gun and then bust your screen either That would be bad Right there There we go Okay, we're good on there and the same on this side Miss the hole, see? When you miss the hole, that's what happens. The grease needs to go inside the hole. Just so you know. Life lesson in there. Okay, there we go. We're in the hole there. Now we can give that a couple little squirts and we're good to go. Get the excess off. You don't want that little rat tail of grease hanging down. We're good on there. Wipe your hands off. You don't want to track grease everywhere. No tracking grease everywhere. A little alcohol on there fixes it all right up. A little paper towel. Get your gloves right back like they need to be. You're not tracking stuff everywhere. Real easy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> right, but I live in an RV. It would be hard to keep relevel. You know what, though? Uh, you're not leveling. Uh, why, why travel? You're not leveling it to, to the world. You're only leveling the bed to the FEP. So once you do it, you don't have to do it again. Even if the, the machine was at a 90 degree angle, it's still 
it's still level because <laughs> you're not leveling the machine to the world. You're just leveling the, the, the bed to the FEP. Um, and so it, it, it doesn't, I didn't get that in the beginning either when I first started printing that, that, uh, you know, the machine doesn't have to be, you know, uh, um, where's my, I have a level. Oh, I have a level right here. The machine doesn't have to be level like this on the table. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It only has to be level the, the build plate to the to the FEP. And, uh, and I'll show you that here in a second. Go figure. What is it? A lot of failures. Not understanding. Uh, let me read what you're saying here. Go figure. Uh, important note is that insightful imagery makes... Oh, if you're downloading files from anywhere, you really have to understand the file before you print it. It can lead to a lot of failures. Yeah, you know what? That's one reason I just, I started building my own files because once again, that triangle of deduction, file, machine, user, I can eliminate file and I can eliminate, you know, either machine or user from that deduction and then find out pretty much what my problem is. If you're downloading files from somebody, then your, your triangle of deduction, you can't really deduct the file from that triangle as, as being the problem because a lot of times, unless you're buying a file from a, a, a reputable source, then, then uh, you know, you're going to run into problems with free files and stuff like that, like on Thingiverse. You just don't know the quality of the file and how it was built and things like that. And and you can't see, probably your slicer will tell you, okay, it has some holes that can be repaired or can't be repaired. So, to go figure's point, you really, you really want to be able to understand that file before you push print on that thing, and it starts building the 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 the, the file for you in the slicer, uh, or you're going to run into problems. Um, as many, as few variables as possible. That's how I stay printing, pretty much error free. Uh, there's just few variables in the way I do it. Um, like I say, same resin all the time. You know, same same files all the time. Uh, even when I build new files, you know. Then if you do get a failure, just look at the build plate and see where it failed on the build plate and how it failed. That's going to tell you kind of how to fix it. Okay, so we've got uh, grease in, in these fittings here. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, this lithium grease. A few drops here and there just doesn't take much you don't need to go all the way down like i did there because the, the the carriage doesn't go down that far it doesn't take much grease on here uh so now it's more than fine right there we're gonna cycle this up and down a couple times and then the last part is i'm gonna level the build plate and then we're gonna be ready to fill this bad boy up with uh resin so on here i'm just gonna push the home button and it's going to go all the way down. Well, it's not going to go all the way down so that this hits the build plate because that's just not possible. But it's going to go all the way down. Let's see here. Okay, keep on going. And all that grease, that good grease. Let me get that little bit off of there a little bit. Uh, the very top. Put, put your finger on it. Uh, okay, good. Looking good. Beautiful. Okay, nice smooth travel. This is all gray with grease. We've got uh, some grease back here on the rails that I just filled up with and it left some behind. So the rails are nice and uh, greased again. Um, so that's really important. Uh, my worry is when I move, it's like my bad, many bad earthquakes in the fifth wheel. And I hear you on that. <laughs> I hear you on that, buddy. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and raise the carriage up just a little bit here. All right, there's good. Okay. Well. Stop. There you go. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to take the build plate. Uh, the build plate for this one is this one here. Okay. It's 
just go ahead and dry our hands and make sure there's no grease on here on my hands because I'm going to touch the build plates and I'm going to touch the screen. I just don't want any any grease on, on here. So let's get it all dried off. Let's put the grease gun to the side. I'm not going to put it away because I still have another machine to do. I'm not going to do that one on the live, but I'm going to do the, you know, uh, so I'm not going to put all my stuff away, but but I'm going to move it out of the way. Um, so let's put it right here. Okay. So there we are. No grease, no resin. Hands are looking good. I can touch stuff. We're not worried about anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the Allen wrench out here and loosen this up. Loosen up your buttons. It's kind of like that, I guess. Loosen that. Another thing to look forward look for too when you loosen these these screws, these Allen heads, sometimes aluminum shavings will fall down onto here. Before you put this all back together, make sure there are no aluminum shavings anywhere that are falling down into the FEP. That could puncture the FEP, and you don't want that. That's nice and loosey goosey. Gosh, shiny that is. Like that tip with the with the scouring pad, huh? Good stuff. Okay, we'll get this. Uh, first, let's get our let's get our um, bolt over here, and we'll start it threaded on here. We don't want anything to fall down onto the <laughs> onto the uh, screen. Okay, let me probably am I still in frame? Yeah, I'm still in frame with this. We're gonna go ahead and slide this on here. Tighten this down. Okay. This should still be nice and loosey goosey. Let me get the uh, one of the papers here that I use. Another quick tip. Blow it off just in case you know you might have any dust or anything on there because you don't want that to go down onto the screen. We'll set that in here. Set yourself right down there. Now we're going to push home. And it's going to go all the way down. And we have our other wrench here. Let me move this grease out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We're in the home position. There's, there's two things that are pretty important here. Uh, once we're in the home position, I'm going to take two fingers. I'm just going to press down evenly on the build plate. Then I'm going to, like a tire, we're going to just snug, then cross over to the other opposite side. Snug, same thing, cross over in the back, snug to the opposite side in the front while keeping pressure the whole time. Snug that down, okay? Now we're good. Now we can go through and just give a final little, a final little snuggy snug snug on there. Now, don't do anything else. The very next thing you do, the button Z equals zero, yes. That is the new zero for your home position, okay? Push enter again, it'll raise back up. Do that, or your home position will be whatever it was last time. And it might be just a little bit off, okay? Take your paper out. Good to go. Put it away. Now, <clears throat> see there, white travel? We didn't level anything. Matter of fact, if I put this level on here, it's going to be unlevel. See? It's it's unlevel, but we're not worried about level to the to the world. This is leveled to the bed. That's what's that's what's getting leveled there. So now we'll go ahead and we'll raise this. Uh, we'll go to move Z. We'll go up uh, by ten a few times until I get the uh, the old clearance that I can put my FEP back in. By this time the FEP is dry. No alcohol remains. We're looking good. Boo! Hear that? Wah wah! Okay, it's like a snare drum. We're good. There's no bits and pieces. There's no cuts, nicks, dings, anything that's alarming uh, in there. So we're all tightened on the back side. Everything is good. It's all dry. Make sure it's dry before you put it down on the back side, especially. 
you don't want any liquid back there, whether it's alcohol or resin or anything. Uh, you don't want anything on that screen. Set it down. Pick it up. Nope. No wet spots. We're good. Put it down in there. Grab these two bolts that we cleaned. Make sure Max is to the back and that little spout is to the back on this model. I'm, I'm pretty much sure it's the same on any model, but know your model but don't you know you want the to be able to read the max as you're filling it you don't want the max over here and you're like how full is it mm. these don't need to be tightened down with 25 pounds of torque just hand tighten let me let me tell you what i do okay see they're both loose i get this down till it just touches this down till it just touches then i go ahead and i turn them both if you don't want to tighten one down and then tighten this down because you're creating a warp in the in the in the vat. You don't want to do that. You want everything really nice and even. We're all good. This machine's ready to fill back up with the resin. It's golden, man. This one's golden and ready to go. Ready to go. So let's do this. Little paper towel towel under there. Set this bad boy off to the side because I'm gonna use it again. Set yourself down. Okay, we'll dump this resin into here. And it's just about to the max. Close enough for government work. Matter of fact, one important note though, for you especially, for a lot of people, for that matter, but why travel? Concerning, concerning machine level, not bed level, because this has happened to me. Your machine will be on a table or whatever, and it'll be slightly out of level, like mine is here. See the, the, the resin all running to the edge there. While that might not seem important, when you get down, when you're doing a print that's 14 hours and you're at work and you come home and you know there's enough resin in there to get the job done, but you come home and your machine wasn't level, then there's no resin over here, but there's resin over here. So your print has now failed because you've run out of resin, even though you really haven't, but your machine wasn't level. So make sure your machine is level to the table. Uh, that is, that is important. Um, but not to be confused with leveling your bed to the fit. So dry all this stuff off and we're going to scoot this machine back into place. And then I will level the machine also. <laughs> but we'll scoot this back here and we will get uh where's my level where's my level i just had my level where's that i lose stuff right in front of me story of my life uh that's really weird <clears throat> you guys see my level <laughs> is the shaking going to damage the machine well i would say to you uh if you think it's going to damage the machine just unplug it and set it to the side until you get where you're going. Uh, set it on your bed or something. Because I would say, yeah, if it's banging around on a counter in the back, then yeah, I, I would say that those internal components could get jarred and fractured and boards could get cracked over time and screens could get cracked. I would certainly say just drain your resin uh, and set your machine on the bed or on some pillows or something until you're getting ready to use it and then fill it up and use it. Uh, and then repeat that process. I would certainly not leave it on the counter so it's bouncing around as you drive down the road because that definitely will uh, affect or could affect <clears throat> the machine absolutely. Uh, all right, who stole my level? Where'd it go? I tell you, this is this is the story of my life right here. I'm look. I know I'm looking right at this level too. Here it is. Look at that. So. Not really worried about, uh, we just leveled the, the bed to the build plate, but we can take it a step further and just go ahead and see now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the, the machine is level to the world. <laughs> level to the world. It's a Tupac song. Level to the world. Uh, anyway, I'm saying dumb stuff, but there we go. We're good, man. This machine is ready to go. We're ready to put the lid back on this. 
everything is good. And we are ready to print. And really, that's, uh, that's how I do a service sort of interval on my machine. There's another step that you can do, and I do this also because, you know, these are by windows and, you know, dust and things in the house. The, uh, I have a little machine right, right here. You could probably do it with compressed air too in a can, but I will turn this on. And what I do is I'll blow the fan and the vents on this just to make sure there's no dust accumulation, kind of like you do with your PC. Just make sure, or for those of you that use Mac, you probably don't even have fans. I don't know. But anyway, uh, for those of us that are in the real world and use a PC, you know, we like to blow the, the dust out of the boards and every so often and blow the fan exhaust out and the power exhaust out and stuff like that. Same thing. Just keep all that stuff moving around in there. I just use a little air to do that. But that really kind of concludes what I do to service a machine, <clears throat> to service a printer to keep it running good. Uh, now I'm going to print and, well, actually I'm going to do the other, I got two other machines here I'm going to do. So uh, I'll do that off of the live because nobody wants to see me do four machines when they really only need to see me do one machine. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to jump out of here and I appreciate everybody watching uh, and we'll holler at you after a while. If you haven't followed me on Insightful Imagery on my, my Instagram, it's Insightful underscore Imagery. Get over there and check me out uh, here on YouTube. Follow, follow my page, man. Uh, hit a like button. Do something for me on there. It's free. Um, and also my website, InsightfulImagery.com and my Etsy. I sell STL files. I sell painted printed props. Uh, I have toy photography uh, galleries on there and lots of cool stuff, man. So it's not hard to find me.